In this first example, we're going to take the function y is equal to x plus 3. We're going to look at that along the interval 0 to 4, and we're going to rotate that around the x-axis. Now I've got my formula up there above us, and we already have our x1 and our x2 identified for us. As we work through this, I also have f of x. So f of x is going to be our function. I do need though f prime of x. So let's go ahead and do that first. So f prime of x is super nice. The derivative of x plus 3 is just going to be 1. So I think I've got everything that I need to put it into our formula. So let's go ahead and do that. So here comes our surface area. So our surface area is equal to the integral along that x interval, so from 0 to 4. 2 pi, which I really could bring out in front here, f of x is my function, x plus 3. And inside my square root for the arc length, I've got 1 plus the derivative of my function, which is also 1 squared, and then a dx. As I work through this, the square root of 1 plus 1 is just a square root of 2. I can also pull out the 2 pi in front before I take my integral. We are just about to our answer here. So our surface area integral, I've got that 2 out in front. I'm going to take the radical 2 out in front as well and the pi. My integral goes from 0 to 4. All I'm left with on the inside is my x plus 3 dx. So x plus 3 dx, a super nice integral. So working this integral through 2 radical 2 pi, the integral of x is going to be an x squared divided by that new power 2, so x squared divided by 2, and the antiderivative of 3 is going to be a 3x, and we're going to evaluate this from 0 to 4. Um, I'm going to do my antiderivative at 4 and then subtract from that the antiderivative at 0. Well, the nice thing about 0 is that I've got an x term in each of my values and my antiderivative, so the antiderivative at 0 is just going to be 0. Evaluating that then at 4, I get 2 radical 2 pi. Um, 4 squared divided by 2 plus 3 times 4. Inside my parentheses, 4 squared divided by 2, that's going to be 16 divided by 2, which is 8. And then 3 times 4 is equal to 12. So I get a 20 here. I can take the 20 times the 2. So this gives me, I think I've got my answer then, 2 times my 20 is 40, and then I need my radical 2, and I need my pi, and that's our answer. Next, we're going to do one with the other orientation around the y-axis. For this one, we've got the function x is equal to the square root of 9 minus y squared. We're going to be looking at the surface area for y values between negative 2 and 2. And we're going to revolve this around the y-axis this time. So we're going to have a different orientation, so around the y-axis. If we looked at this one, let's see if I can draw a semicircle. It turns out to be, not bad, it turns out to be a semicircle between negative 3 and positive 3. But we're going to be looking for this surface area of revolution just between 2 and negative 2. So if I erase this so it lines up with 2, and negative 2, it's going to look something like this. Um, not the best picture, but you get the idea. We're revolving it now this way, which means that my band is going to sit in this direction instead. My delta s now has a y orientation or a vertical orientation, so I need to start out by just rewriting my formula in terms of y. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. So my formula then, uh, my surface area is equal to, I'm going to pull that 2 pi out in front, 
integral from, I'm just going to write this in general to start, y1 to y2. We want that function value because that's again going to represent our radius r. So that's going to be f of, this time it's in terms of y, so f of y. And then inside the square root, I've got 1 plus the derivative of my function. So I'm going to write it as f prime of y squared. And this is all then dy. So there's my adjusted function. And we've got most everything. We've got our y1 and our y2. I already have my function in terms of y. So I've got f of y here. The only thing I'm missing is the derivative. So we're going to start there. I'm going to start by taking that derivative. But I first want to write it instead of as a square root as a one-half power. So I'm going to rewrite this function x as 9 minus y squared to the one-half power. Now I can go ahead and take the derivative using a chain rule. So as I take my derivative, x prime, which is the same as f prime of y, I'm going to go ahead and do my derivative with my outer function, that one-half power first, with respect to the inner function. So one-half, I leave the inner function, 9 minus y squared, and then I subtract 1 from my power. One-half minus 1 is going to give me a negative one-half. And now I'm going to take the derivative of my inner function. The derivative of my inner function, derivative of 9 is 0, and the derivative of negative y squared is negative 2y. I can simplify a few things. I can cancel this 2. That's going to leave me a negative and a y in my numerator. And I can rewrite this 1 half power as a square root. But because of that negative, it's going to live in the denominator. So here's what f prime of y looks like. So f prime of y is going to have a negative y in the numerator. Or you can pull the negative out in front. In my denominator, I've got my 9 minus y squared. That takes care of the negative power. The 1 half power turns this into a square root. Now what I really needed was f prime of y, or my derivative squared. So let's go ahead and square this before I put it back into our formula. So squaring this, I end up with f prime of y squared is equal to y squared divided by 9 minus y squared squared, and that's going to be a 9 minus y squared. Okay, let's go ahead and put everything back into our formula. I'm back up here at the top, so we've got all the information about our surface area of revolution along with that derivative squared. Let's go ahead and put everything into our surface area formula. So I've got the 2 pi out in front, and our y1 and y2 are negative 2 to positive 2. And then I need my f of y. That's going to be my function in its original form, so that's 9 minus y squared. And then times, this is going to be that arc length, 1 plus f prime of y squared. So that's going to be y squared divided by 9 minus y squared. And then we have a dy on the outside. Now I'm going to do a couple of things. I do notice that this is, let me go ahead and just fill this in, this um, revolution here is symmetric. So if I were to draw this, it's symmetric top and bottom. So I can actually go ahead and instead, I can revolve this from 0 to 2 and multiply it by 2. So if I take the top and revolve that, I can go ahead and multiply it by 2. And that's going to give me the surface area in total. Zeros are really, really nice to integrate with. You could, of course, leave the negative 2. But I'm going to go ahead and do that because I like integrating with zeros instead. So that gives us some things to clean up here. OK, so we've got our surface area is equal to, I'm going to do 2 times everything now. So 2 times 2 pi, integral from 0 to 2. So this 
Splitting that in half means I need to double my surface area when I'm done. And then I've got the square root of nine minus y squared. I don't need to do anything there times the square root of, I need to work on this. I need to get a, um, a single fraction in there. I really am hoping for something squared so I can apply that square root. And I think I can do that. I'm gonna change that one into a nine minus y squared over a nine minus y squared. So that is equal to one, something divided by itself. And then I've got the plus y squared divided by nine minus y squared dy. Let's go ahead and just bring that out and simplify that. Um, so adding those together inside that second square root, I've got nine minus y squared in my denominator. In my numerator, I have a nine minus y squared plus the other y squared. So plus another y squared. And that means I can cancel these y squareds. So inside that square root, I've got a nine divided by a nine minus y squared. Now this was all inside that square root. Look what else we can do. I can take the square root of that nine. So I'm working inside this square root now. So as I take the square root of that nine, I end up with, and I think I've got a form now that I can put back into my integral. I end up with the square root of nine divided by the square root of nine minus y squared. And we're gonna put that back into our integral as three divided by the square root of nine minus y squared. So this is going to go into our integral in for that second square root. So rewriting this, I've got, let's simplify our two times two pi out in front. I'm gonna write that as a four pi integral from zero to two. Do you see what's gonna happen? I've got that radical nine minus y squared. And now let's go ahead and write in what we've got for that second square root. I'm gonna put it in blue so you can see. So I've got three divided by the square root of nine minus y squared. And this all has a dy. Look how nice all of this work turns out to be. I can go ahead and cancel the radicals and I end up with a really great integral to solve. So finishing this off, I can also bring the three out in front. That's a constant multiplier, but I'm just gonna leave it there for now so you can see where everything came from. I've got a three dy here. Let's take that integral. The integral of three is gonna be a three y. So I have four pi times three y evaluated from zero to two. So I only need to worry about the two now, but I am gonna take my antiderivative, which is 12 pi y, and evaluate it from zero to two. So the antiderivative at two minus the antiderivative at zero gives me 12 pi times two minus 12 pi times zero, and we end up with our answer of 24 Hi. I hope this was helpful. Check out my other videos. You're going to get this. Thank you so much for watching.